Hello and welcome back to my channel or if you are new here my name is Whitley. I have not done a wrap up on this channel yet and I have been on booktube for a couple months now and if you didn't notice I am at my computer right now because I thought it would be fun since I have not done a wrap up on this channel yet I thought I would encompass all of my summer reads into one wrap up and I thought it would be fun to do a tier ranking of all of the books that I read this summer. Before we get into the tier ranking, I will give you some of my summer reading statistics. I absolutely love seeing everybody's statistics and I love keeping track of my reading so I thought I would share some of those. And if you do not wish to hear about the statistics, I will leave a timestamp somewhere on the screen so you can skip to that to get into the wrap up. I read 23 books this summer and of those, six of them were five star reads, 11 were four stars, and six were three stars, and zero, two, or one stars. So overall my reading this summer has been great. I have read 13 books physically, eight on audiobook, and two on ebook. I've read 12 adult, nine YA and two middle grade or children's books. And as for genres, there may be more than 23 numbers on here because some of the books that I have read fall into more than one category, but I have read five fantasies, 11 horrors, seven mysteries, three contemporary romances, two graphic novels, two poetry or in verse novels, and one classic. I read 8,313 pages this summer. My average page count was 361. The average amount of days that it took me to complete a book was three. And for the individual months for June, I read six books and my page count was 2,158. I read nine books in July, totaling 3,559 pages, which is like the most I've read in a month since I can remember. July was such a good reading month. And in August I read nine books totaling 2,596 pages. Okay so I'm just going to go in order from beginning to end of what I read all summer. So let's get started. The first book I read was Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a YA contemporary mystery about a teenage girl named Sadie and her sister was found dead. And after the police don't really do much, Sadie is determined to get justice for her little sister. So she goes on this road trip trying to follow the clues about where the man who she believes killed her sister is so she can confront him and bring justice to her little sister's death. And this book was really cool because it switched perspectives between Sadie and this man with a podcast who has a show about small town mysteries and he is reporting on Sadie and her little sister and he goes and talks to the family and it is so well produced. I listened to the audiobook for this and I'm sure if you've heard anything about Sadie, you have heard how spectacular this audiobook is, and it truly is. It has a full cast of characters, and Sadie's family is from a trailer park, so when this man goes to her trailer park to talk to her family, like, it has so much background noise, and it truly immerses you into this story. It is phenomenal. Okay, so let's go to the ranking here. I really enjoyed Sadie, especially the audiobook. Like, I think it just made the whole experience that much better. I gave this five stars, as it says, phenomenal. The next book I read was Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alir Sainz. This is a YA contemporary romance about Aristotle and Dante, two teenage boys who are kind of loners at the beginning, but once they meet, they become the best of friends. And there are so many good topics discussed in this book. I mean, there is teenage angst, there is questioning sexuality, and I feel like the teenage struggles were written really well and realistic. Like, I obviously wasn't a teenage boy, but I feel all teenagers kind of go through the same coming of age issues and questions 
and I feel like that was done really well in this book. I did listen to this on audiobook and it was actually narrated by Lin-Manuel Miranda and I absolutely adore Hamilton which is really the only thing I have to compare Lin-Manuel Miranda to but I was not a big fan of how he narrated this story. I feel like he was kind of monotoned and didn't really have different voices for the different characters which I really enjoy in an audiobook. There were also just some little weird things that I did not like about the book. I feel the dialogue was written strangely. It was really short and curt. I mean granted these are teenage boys but I think maybe I'm used to dialogue without I said, he said, she said after every single sentence and I think that kind of threw me off and like I said it is the dialogue is really short and strange that's really all I know how to say about it I just wasn't a fan of how the dialogue was written and there were so many times where the characters would just bust out laughing for no reason like I don't know if maybe I just didn't get it but a character would say something that was not a joke I don't think it was meant to be funny and then both characters would just bust out laughing and both of those things just kind of distracted me and brought me out of the story but I did absolutely love these characters I loved the family dynamic and reading about how much these two boys loved each other like even just as friends was just so heartwarming I also give huge props to this book for having parents that openly admit they have no idea what they're doing. Like they are just trying their best and they make mistakes and they fail just like every other human being. And I feel like that's rare for a YA book to portray. So I really love that about this book as well. So with all of that in mind, I gave this book a four stars. I loved it. I loved the characters. I loved the family. There were just a few things that brought me out of the story and distracted me that I wasn't a big fan of in this book as well. And although the ending was predictable, it was still super adorable. Next is a book I'm sure you have all heard of before and it is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. Oh my gosh. I just realized that rhymed. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it even more now. Spoiler alert. I loved this book. I know Sarah J Mass. you either love her or hate her, but I absolutely loved this book. I read it as a library book and as soon as I finished it, I purchased it because I knew I had to own it. I wanted to reread it. I wanted to tab that baby up. So if you somehow don't know what Throne of Glass is about, it is a YA fantasy romance about this young girl named Selena and she used to be the country's biggest baddest assassin but she was caught and put in prison so we start this book with the prince coming to offer her a deal saying that if she would like to compete to be the king's assassin which is basically to go out and kill anyone he says to kill that if she wins this competition she can be the king's assassin and after so long in this position she will earn her freedom and of course she takes it and this book follows the competition and competitors start showing up dead and there's just so much happening in this book and I absolutely loved it so if you couldn't tell this was definitely a five star for me it was phenomenal and I don't think I've ever read a love triangle that by the end of the book I did not know who I shipped like that is so rare for me like I almost always immediately know yes this is who needs to be together but by the end of this book I was not sure so I cannot wait to read the second book and this whole series I'm so excited the next book that I read was Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foodie this is a YA fantasy romance about this traveling circus and in this traveling circus everybody who lives and works there has special abilities and the curator's daughter Serena is able to create these illusions so she can think of these characters and then bring them to life but they're not real people 
but they are individuals like they are alive for all intents and purposes but they were created by Serena and out of nowhere these illusions start coming up dead which Serena did not think was possible since they're not technically alive like you can touch them they have emotions but they are illusions like they're not real so the fact that they are turning up dead is baffling to everybody in this circus so Serena goes on this mission to try to figure out one how her illusions are being killed and two who is doing the killing so I loved these characters I thought they were very unique and each individual character had such a unique voice but the world building and the magic system was a little confusing at times especially the magic system left me with a few questions I'm gonna give it a 3.5 I thought it was really good and for a debut novel because like I said although the magic system was a little questionable sometimes I loved the characters really enjoyed the romance and there was a pretty big twist at the end that I'm sure experienced mystery readers could figure out but me a mystery newbie was pretty shocked at so 3.5 the next book is Verity by Colleen Hoover this is an adult mystery thriller romance and it follows this woman Loen who is hired to finish writing this woman Verity's book series since she has been in an accident and can no longer finish it herself and Verity's office is a huge mess of notes and papers so Verity's husband invites Loen to come stay with him and his son so she can go through all of these notes in Verity's office and once she starts doing this she finds this autobiography of Verity's that has some really disturbing confessions and the longer she stays here the more freaked out she is by Verity and also she starts kind of catching feelings for Verity's husband and she's like having this battle within herself whether to tell Verity's husband about this book that she's found because how could he love her once he finds out all of these terrible things that Verity has done. This book was so suspenseful, so creepy, and there are definitely some really dark passages in this book. Trigger warnings for assault, child abuse, and that twist at the end had me baffled. I did not see that coming. It was mind-blowing to me. I thought this book was so good. This is definitely a 4.5. It was fantastic. The only reason it didn't get a 5 was because I was not a big fan of the romance, which is weird because that's Colleen Hoover's like forte. But I just didn't really see why these two people had an attraction. I just didn't feel it. And in my opinion, the story didn't even need a romance. I mean, it makes sense towards the end, but that's the only thing that kept it from a five. This book was so good. I loved it. The next book I read was The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, which was my first Elizabeth Acevedo book. This is a YA contemporary that is written in verse and it is written like it is written by our, who is a teenage girl named Ziamara. She's from a very religious family and she just loves to write poetry. She writes about feeling unheard, especially by her family, the way that boys treat her like a sex item instead of a human being. And then the feelings that she starts to get about a boy in her class. But the romance, I feel, definitely takes a backseat to the family dynamic of this book. The relationship between Ziamara and her mother, I think, is definitely the highlight of this book. And how they kind of butt heads. And how Ziamara feels like her mother doesn't understand her. Elizabeth Acevedo's writing is just so magical and beautiful and delicious. I listened to this on audiobook, which I highly recommend because it is narrated by Elizabeth Acevedo herself and it was just told in such a powerful way because she knows exactly how she wants the characters to sound and it was just so gorgeously narrated. I absolutely loved the characters. 
and I truly felt like I was transported into the life of Ziomar. Like I was so attached to this young girl and I just wanted nothing but happiness for her. I also will give this a 4.5. It was absolutely fantastic. And I think the only thing that kept it from a five star was the shortness. I didn't really feel like there was much of a plot. Not that that was a big issue for me because it is so character driven and I loved the characters. I just wanted a little more. The next book is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is an adult contemporary romance about the female president's son and the Prince of England. And these two boys have known each other for a few years and it seems like they do not like each other. So at the beginning of this book it starts with an event and they kind of make a scene. So the American and the English royal families get together and create this fake friendship ploy saying that these two boys need to become friends for some good publicity for both of these families. So as they kind of stage this fake friendship for the media, some feelings start to happen. And the main concern that I've heard about this book is that the is that the British character is kind of like a caricature of a British teenager, like very stereotypical. And I could see that. But I think since I'm not from England, maybe I didn't catch on to that. It has been a long time since a book has given me like the romance fuzzies. I don't know how else to explain it, but like this book had me heated in the best way. I loved this book so much. I thought it was phenomenal, not only for the romance, which was glorious, but some of the political aspects of this book I really enjoyed. The president's son is a bi Mexican and he's wanting to go into politics and there's a female president and it just talks about like representation in politics and how things need to change. I absolutely adored this book. Perfection. 10 out of 10. Would recommend. Also funny story. So I was kind of telling my husband about this book because I, I've i read gay romance before but never like smutty gay romance so I was kind of nervous when they started getting like hot and heavy. I was like am I gonna read my first like legit gay sex scene? Like I was kind of nervous, kind of excited and my, I told my husband this and he was just like what am I gonna do with her? <laughs> but like after I finished it I was like not to be a creep but I would have been okay if it like would have kept going like Casey McQuiston builds up the sex scenes like because you get some info like you get some info but then once it like gets to a certain point it just kind of fades to black like why you gotta do that just keep going like just let it finish you know we want the finish I just sound like a creep now. <laughs> but yes, loved it. Fantastic. Would recommend. So the next few books that I'm going to talk about, I actually did a vlog for. So I am not going to really go into depth about these. If you would like some more information about what these are about or my thoughts on them further than just where they fall on this list, I will link the vlog up above so you can go check that out. So the next book I read was Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. It was my first Paul Tremblay book. I read it for the Horror in 24's group read. It's basically about a zombie apocalypse. It follows these two women. One of them is pregnant and one of them is a doctor. And it's basically just advanced rabies. Like if you get bit, the incubation period is within like an hour instead of a few weeks. And it was okay. I gave, it, it's definitely okay average. I gave it three stars. It was a little slow and it seemed like a lot of the other participants in the horror in 24 felt the same. But I did like the writing style. I will definitely check out more Paul Tremblay in the future. I apologize if the angle is a little different. My cat knocked my camera down again. So it's gonna be an ongoing thing on this channel. If you ever see an angle change, probably cause my cat knocked my phone down. Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. 
So long story short, it is about a bunch of killer sirens and a bunch of scientists who go and try to discover these killer sirens in the Mariana Trench. And boy, do they find them. I am going to put this one here. I thought it was good. I liked it. I just found it kind of slow and there were some parts where it would just cut off like it would be right in the middle of something and then it would just cut off and cut to a point in the future and I'm like what happened between these times like I need to know these things also there was some romance which I am all for LGBTQ plus representation but I was not a fan of this romance it kind of came out of nowhere for me and this story didn't need a romance you know you know what I'm saying next was the shining by stephen king also read this for horror in 24. if you don't know what the shining is about one where have you been and two you can watch the vlog because i'm not going to explain it again because i'm sure almost everyone knows what the shining is about i'm a huge fan of stephen king's works and this was no different i gave it four stars i loved it watch the movie directly afterwards weird experience check the vlog if you would like to know more. Next was Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This was my first Riley Sager book, basically about this woman who lived in this house as a child for three weeks, I think, and then never went back. Her family left saying it was haunted. Her dad wrote a story about it, got famous, and now she's 30 years old. Her dad just passed away and the house was left to her, so now she's gonna go back and fix it up, do some damage control to try to get it ready to sell. And when that happens, some weird things start happening. I loved this book so much. It was such a good mystery, such a good thriller. There were some parts in this book where I was laying in bed the next night and in the dark in my kitchen another night and I was getting freaked out just thinking about some of the things that happened in this book loved it highly recommend the next book is the picture of dorian gray by oscar wilde also for horror in 24. this book is about a beautiful young man who is painted by this artist and he gets really angry with this painting thinking about how this painting will forever be beautiful and he will grow old and ugly so he exclaims to the universe that he wishes that his portrait and him could switch souls and that's what happens. So as he grows old and and as he makes these questionable decisions and as they call it in the book, commit these sins, he himself remains beautiful and young, but this portrait starts to deteriorate and become haggard and really disturbing looking. And it kind of follows his descent into madness. It was a trip. I. I enjoyed it. It was okay. It was also a classic, which I am not a big reader of. So it at times was a little difficult to get through, but also very interesting. Like I really enjoyed my time reading it, although it did take me a little longer than a contemporary would. There were definitely some thought provoking passages in there. And just watching this young man descend into madness was a great time. And the last book I read for the Horror in 24 readathon was Strange Weather by Joe Hill, which is a collection of four short horror stories. And altogether, I gave this four stars. Collections of short stories are kind of hard to rate because I absolutely adored one of these in here. I would have rated it 10 out of 10 if I could. Two of the other ones I would have gave like four, 4.5, and then one I would have given like two. So I thought four was a fair rating. If you liked short horror stories, I highly recommend Strange Weather. These next few books I'm going to talk about were also for a readathon, and that was The Reading Rush, which I also had a vlog for. So again, if you would like to know anything more about these next few books and what I thought of them, I will link the vlog up above and down below. The first book was Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I loved the Poet X so much, so I had to get my hands on this one. And Clap When You Land was just as good as The Poet X. I absolutely loved it. Again, Elizabeth Acevedo does such a good job with the family dynamics and family relationships. And there were actually two different narrators for each of the two girls that were in this book, which was even more immersive. And Elizabeth Acevedo 
is tough to compete with because she is just such a good narrator of her own books but the other girl that was narrating for the other character did such a good job they both together were so wonderful and I enjoyed this book so much. The next book was actually a reread and that was The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbotsky. I enjoyed it just as much the second time. I gave it four stars. I forgot how dark and deep this went. It, it had been years since I had read it so I forgot almost everything but as someone who also deals with depression it it was definitely relatable and I loved it. Four stars. The next book was Escape from the Carnival of Horrors by R.L. Stein, which is actually a choose-your-own-adventure Goosebumps book, and I gave this 3.5 stars. I found it hard how to rate it because it obviously wasn't meant for 26-year-old me, but childhood me absolutely adored it, and I'm not an avid children's book reader, so again, rating this was kind of hard, so I settled on 3.5. It was so nostalgic and I enjoyed just getting into that childhood mind space again. It was so much fun. And the last book that I read for the reading rush was V for Vendetta by Alan Moore, which is the graphic novel that the movie V for Vendetta was based on, which is one of my all-time favorite movies, so I had to read the source material. And for anyone that knows me would know, unsurprisingly, it was five stars. Phenomenal. I loved it so much. There were some differences between the movie and the graphic novel, but both so good. The next book I read was Sheets by Brenna Thumbler, which is I believe a middle grade graphic novel. This was so adorable. It follows this little ghost named Wendell and he finds himself in this young girl's laundromat who has been kind of running this laundromat since her mom passed away because her dad is still grieving and her brother is still very young so he can't help yet. So she's just been running this laundromat on her own and this little ghost finds his way into the laundromat and wreaks some havoc and creates some troubles for this young girl but they end up being friends and honestly this book kind of hit me in the feels a little bit. It was kind of sad but so heartwarming and so cute. I absolutely loved it. I gave it 4.5 stars. I would highly recommend it. The illustrations were so colorful and cute and detailed and this book was just a joy. I loved it. The next book I read was Night Film by Marie Chapessel. So this book is over 600 pages and I definitely felt that. This book was dense and I kind of had to trudge through it. Like I had to force myself to keep going. I mean, I did enjoy reading it, but it took me almost three weeks to finish. But on the other hand, it was so immersive. Like you felt like this was, this could be a real story. So it follows this journalist who finds about this young girl who supposedly committed suicide. And he finds out that it was actually the daughter of a cult horror classic director who has been out of the media for like 30 years and this journalist had actually previously attempted to investigate this director and it ended up ruining this journalist's career so when he finds out that the director's daughter is found dead he thinks this can't be a coincidence and he kind of goes down this rabbit hole to try to find out the mysteries behind this family. And it is told in multimedia format, which was also super cool. We get like documents and some dark web web pages. So even though it did take me a while to get through, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I loved it. Like I said, it was like so real, so immersive. And you go through most of the book believing one thing and then finally all of your questions are answered. And I feel like it wrapped up very well. It just took me a little bit to get there. And the last readathon of the summer that I participated in was Summerween and I also have a vlog for it so these next few books you know the drill. If you would like to know more about them and more about what I thought I will leave the link to the vlog up above and down below. The first book I read for Summerween was The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelitis. I absolutely loved this book. It was such a good mystery. It's about this wife that seemingly out of nowhere shoots her husband five times and she gets sent to this mental institution and we follow the psychologist who is trying to treat her and get her to speak up about why she shot her husband. 
the ending of this book had me so mind blown. I was baffled, shook, jaw dropped. It was insane. The next book I read was The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. And this was actually my first Grady Hendrix and I will definitely be reading everything else he's written because I loved this book so much. I gave it four and a half stars. It was so good about a bunch of 90s moms who go on the hunt for this vampire that just moved into town. And it was so good. It was so creepy. And Grady Hendrix does such a good job at writing scenes that will give you like goosebumps, like the heebie-jeebies. Because the next book I read was also a Grady Hendrix and that was Horror Store, which there were definitely some parts in here that were like intense. So this is basically about a haunted Ikea and it's set up like a furniture catalog. So whoever created this book's layout was so smart. It was so good. It was so much fun to read. I gave this book four stars. Absolutely loved it. Although the characters were kind of one dimensional, but the setting and like the haunting of this store was written so well and it was so much fun to read. And lastly, I read Wilder Girls by Rory Power. I was so excited to read this book. I thought it was going to be fantastic. I know that there were a lot of mixed reviews, but I thought I was going to love this book. And unfortunately, I did not. I gave this book three and a half stars. It was good. I'm glad I read it, but it just wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be. So that is it. Those are all of the books that I read this summer. I had such a good few months of reading. I participated in some wonderful readathons. I cannot wait to see what fall holds. It is my absolute favorite season. So I am super excited to dig in to some spooky reads, cuddle up in some sweaters, buy some campfires, stock up on everything pumpkin spice. So we shall see what the next season holds in store. Hopefully my next wrap up will not be this big. But who knows, I'm not sure if I want to do monthly wrap ups or not. But this has been my summer wrap up. Let me know down below what you thought of kind of integrating the tier ranking into the wrap ups. I really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm looking at it now and I just love seeing everything that I've read set up in such an organized way. So yeah, let me know what you thought. Let me know if you think that you would prefer to do maybe like a seasonal like I did this time or if I should do monthly ones. I just don't know if I read enough monthly to make a whole video of it, but we will see. I guess it depends on how much I read each month. Let me know what your favorite read of the summer was. Mine is hard. I know that's such a hard question. I think mine would definitely either be Red, White, and Royal Blue or Throne of Glass. I loved both of them so much and for different reasons, so definitely either one of those. Thank you so much for watching my first ever wrap up. Hopefully my next one won't be so big. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't. I hope you have a great day, a great week. Continue to stay safe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.